Welcome to our lecture online, and here's the very specific case of light, light interference, light interference, no, no, not really light interference, but light interference for the Young's double slit. And so what this is, it's, for example, we have a screen with two small little slits a distance d apart, and we shine light on those two slits, and of course those slits are really, really close together. Typically they're within a fraction of a millimeter or a few millimeters apart. And when that happens, when you shine a line on that, when the light goes through these very small openings, it will diffract on the other side of the, um, of the openings. And that's because the wavelength of the light is, is somewhat proportional to the size of these slits. And so therefore, light will just pass the slits, go in all different directions, which means that no matter where you look, let's say on the screen at some distance away, maybe a few meters away from the slits, you'll see what we call an interference pattern. A pattern where you see uh, sections where there's bright light and then no light and then bright light and no light and bright light and no light and so we see these what we call these fringes or interference patterns and the reason why they occur is because at some points you'll have a situation where the light will come together like this in a single location and you can see of course that there'll be a path length difference to that particular location and therefore you'll either have a constructive or destructive interference I didn't quite hit it right but uh, let's say we have maybe another situation where the light goes like this and the light goes like this. And again, you can see that there'll be paddling differences on different locations on the screen away from the slits. And of course, if the paddling difference is exactly equal to a wavelength or two wavelengths or three wavelengths, then you'll have constructive interference. If the paddling difference is equal to a half a wavelength or one and a half or two and a half wavelengths, then you'll have destructive interference. And so that's why we have these uh, patterns. So what we're going to learn today is how to calculate the path length difference in such a way that we'll get these various uh, interference patterns or yes interference patterns and how far apart they are and how wide they are and so forth. All right now the spot directly across from the slits you can see that those rays would travel the exact same distance. So obviously, when we get to this point right here, you're going to see constructive interference, and this is called the central maximum. And then we have the first uh, dark spots where light will completely destructively interfere, so you'll see nothing at all. And then you'll see the first bright spots away from the central maximum, so that would be the first max, and that would then be the second max, and that would be the third max and so forth. So these are the interference fringes and of course you have the first dark spot, the second dark spot, the third dark spot. So let's hear this is the first dark spot or completely destructive interference occurs there. There's the second, uh, second dark spot and so forth. And then the question would be, well, how far away from the central maximum do these things occur? Do we have the dark spots and the bright spots, the bright fringes? And uh, we usually call this distance Y we call the distance across to the screen, uh, call anything, and let's call it L. And then the distance between the two slits is D. And of course, we need to know the wavelength of the light that we shine on it. So that's also important to know. So we need to know the wavelength lambda. And then how do we find these bright and dark fringes? Well, to do that, let me make a small modification here. We'll clear this out, put my Y back. And let's say that we want to find the location of the first maximum. Well, the first maximum would be right there. And you can see then that this path is slightly longer than that path. And if we try to figure out how much longer it is, if I draw the perpendicular line from here to there, I can then say that this portion right here would be the extra distance traveled by the second ray compared to the first ray. And if this angle here is theta, then this angle here must be theta as well. Makes sense because this is perpendicular to that and this is perpendicular to this, so those two angles must be equal. And then if this distance d is the hypotenuse of this triangle, I can then say that this extra distance, which is opposite to the angle, can be expressed as the hypotenuse d times the sine of theta. And if the extra distance traveled is equal to 1 lambda, we get to the first maximum. If the extra distance traveled is equal to 2 lambda, then we get the second maximum. And if the extra distance traveled is equal to 3 lambda, then we get the third maximum and so forth. And in the very same token, if the extra distance traveled, if the extra distance traveled by the second ray compared to the first, and you can see then as the 
for, for you to go to these next fringes, of course, the angle has to be, become greater, then theta becomes greater, and as theta becomes greater, the extra distance becomes greater as well. So you can see how that works. And so if the extra distance travels equal, let's say, to a half a lambda, we get to the first dark spot. And if the extra distance travel is equal to one and a half lambda, we get to the second dark spot and so forth. And I think you can see the pattern here. All right, so now the question then becomes, how far away from the center maximum are these particular things? Well, as an example, let's say that the wavelength of the light that we're using is 600 nanometers. And let's say that L is equal to two meters away. So we put the screen two meters away from the slits, and let's say that D in our example is equal to uh, 1.5 millimeters, like so. Then where would we find these dark and bright fringes? Okay, well, let's start with the first one. We want to find the first dark spot. So to find the first dark spot, what is the condition? To find the first dark spot, we have to say that the extra distance traveled must equal a half a wavelength. So the extra distance traveled must equal one half of a wavelength. And so we know that the extra distance travel is equal to d sine theta, according to our geometry here. So we can then say that d sine theta is equal to lambda over two. Now, how do we relate sine theta to y and to l? Well, it turns out these are very, very tiny angles. And for very small angles, the sine of theta is equal to the, the tangent of theta. So we can write d tangent of theta is equal to lambda over two. And of course, the definition of tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. So if I draw this line right here, I can see this is the opposite side to the angle. This is the adjacent side to the angle. So I can say that tangent of theta can be written as y over L equals lambda over two. Now you say, well, wait a minute. This line right here doesn't quite go directly across the central maximum. And that's an aberration of the drawing. These slits are actually really, really, really close together. So the distance from one slit to the other is so minute that basically they're directly across from the central maximum. The reason why it doesn't look that way here is because I drew it a lot bigger so it's easier to see. But in essence, it is very close to, to being accurate. Okay, at that time, we're going to find y. So we solve this equation for y. So we have y is equal to lambda times l divided by 2 times d. Put in the l up here, put in the d down there, solve them for y, and then plug in the right numbers. And let's see here. In this case, we have y is equal to lambda, which is 600 nanometers. That's 600 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. That's the wavelength of visible light. The length, the distance to the screen was 2 meters. Then we divide it by two times d, the distance between the two slits, which is 1.5 millimeters, which is 0.0015 meters. So, and what is that distance equal to? So we have 600 e to the 9 minus times 2 divided by 2 divided by 0 0.0015 equals 4 times 10 to the minus 4. 4 times 10 to the minus 4 meters which is equal to 0 0.4 millimeters. So 0 0.4 millimeters from the central maximum, we find our first dark spot. All right, now next, we're going to find the first bright spot. So the first maximum. And then the conditions to have a first maximum, that means that the extra distance traveled will now be equal to a whole wavelength right here. If it's equal to whole wavelength, we get our first maximum. And of course, our first maximum will always be equal to d sine theta. Of course, we need a bigger, small, slightly bigger angle theta in order to get to that first maximum. So the conditions is for the first maximum that the extra distance traveled is equal to a whole wavelength and the extra distance traveled is equal to d sine theta. So d sine theta is equal to lambda. And then again, we do the same thing. Sine theta is approximately equal to the tangent of theta, which is equal to y over l. So we can say that d times y over l equals lambda, or y is equal to lambda l over d. And then if we plug in the values, lambda again is 600 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. The length, that's the distance to the screen, is equal to 2 meters. And then the d, the distance between the two slits, 1.5 millimeters or 0 0.0015 meters. And the answer then is, now if you look very carefully, notice that it's going to be twice as big 
as this because we don't have this 2 down here, so it's going to be twice that number. We work it on the calculator, we'll get 8 times 10 to the minus 4 meters, which is equal to 0 0.8 millimeters. So exactly double the distance will get us from the central maximum to the first max across this first dark spot, which is 4 tenths of a millimeter away, and this is 8 tenths of a millimeter away. Now, what if we want to find the second dark spot? Okay, we do the same thing again. We come over here, second dark spot. The conditions to find that, we know that the extra distance has to be one and a half wavelengths. So here we go, extra distance is equal to one and a half lambda, which is equal to three over two lambda. And so extra distance traveled again, that's going to be the d sine theta is equal to three over two lambda. And then, of course, sine of theta is the same as the tangent of theta, which is the same as y over l. So we can say that d times y over l is equal to 3. Oop, that's a terrible, terrible looking 3. Let me correct that. So 3 over 2 lambda, or no, we're not looking for d. We're looking for lambda, or in this case, we're looking for y. y is equal to 3 lambda l over 2 d. And then, of course, you can see that that's going to be three times as much as this. When we plug in the numbers, we're going to get 1.2 millimeter. Okay, then if we want to find the second bright spot, or the second maximum, the condition for that is going to be that the extra distance traveled from the second wave compared to the first wave is going to be 2 lambda. And if we say that extra distance traveled is d sine theta, that must equal to 2 lambda. And of course, d sine theta is the same as d tangent of theta, which is the same as d times y over l. d times y over l equals 2 lambda. And finally, then we can again say that y is equal to 2 lambda over d, oh, 2 lambda l over d. I think I'm messing that up here a little bit here. All right, now you notice when we found the first maximum, we got y equals lambda l over d. When we find the second maximum, we have y equals 2 lambda l over d, twice as much as this, which means it's going to be twice as big as this. That means that y is going to be 1.6 millimeters. And here you can see the pattern that the spacing seems to be fairly regular, that to find the first dark spot, we set the extra distance traveled, d sine theta equal to half a wavelength. To find the first maximum, first bright spot, we set the extra distance traveled, d sine theta equal to full lambda. To find the second dark spot, we set the extra distance traveled equal to 3 halves lambda. To find the second bright spot, we set the extra distance traveled equal to 2 lambda, and so forth. So the general pattern is to find the bright spot, and so to find the maxima or bright spots, you simply set the extra distance travel equal to an integer number times a wavelength. One lambda, two lambda, three lambda to find the first, second, third bright spot. If you find, want to find the dark spots away from the central maximum, you find the extra distance travel equal to half a lambda, one and a half lambda, two and a half lambda, and so forth. And by the way, it also works in the other direction. If you start looking in this direction, then of course the top beam will travel farther than the bottom beam. And again, the extra distance traveled will be equal to either a full wavelength, two wavelengths, three wavelengths to find the bright spots. And it will be equal to one and a half, one half, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half wavelengths to find the dark spots looking down as well. And that's how you find the interference fringes as we call them. These are fringes of light and dark that we find because of the interference pattern of light after light goes through two slits called Young's double slit and then because of that fraction forms these patterns on the screen away from these slits. And that's how you find the bright and dark spots of the interference pattern.